Okay, this is a video on the first part of our probability unit. Um, it's talking about interpreting data. So first I'm going to introduce a concept then go through some of our vocabulary with you in this lesson. All right, so in this first event, uh, Ms. Holbert is wanting to grow a vegetable garden. What are the different outcomes that can happen after she plants the vegetable seeds? When we say outcomes, we're talking about things that could happen. All right, so either they're going to grow or they're not going to grow. Um, that's, those are the two things that can happen when I plant seeds and wait to see what happens. Uh, for the event two, Ms. Holbert robs a bank, and what are the different outcomes that she can happen that can happen after she takes the money? Well, she could get caught or she could not get caught. Um, you know, either she's going to get away with it or she's not, and those are the two events. So all these options that I have listed, they're what's called the sample space. So all of the possible options listed out is called the sample space. Okay, so here's that vocabulary term in bold for you right there. All right, continuing to keep this all in perspective for us. Um, so list the sample space for the following events. That means if I spin this spinner, my options are 1, 2, 3, or 4. Those are my four options that when I spin the spinner I could possibly get. Okay, so um, in event 1, spinning a spinner that contains a number 1 through 4, um, that's going to be the 1, 2, 3, or a 4. Rolling a six-sided die, so that would be a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. By the way, just in case you're wondering, die is singular for dice. All right, so it could land on any one of those six numbers. Um, drawing a marble from a bag that contains two red, two blue, and one white marble. So that would be a red, a red, a blue, a blue, and a white. Those would be the sample spaces for those three events, okay? Uh, then it starts talking about outcomes. So that would be when you actually do this experiment, what could happen? So what are the outcomes from the sample space of event A and event B have in common? All right, so event A, that was with the spinner, one, two, three, and four. Event B, that was with the six-sided die, one, two, three, and four five and six, one, two, three, and four showed up twice, so that would be what they have in common, one, two, three, and four. So when we talk about things having stuff in common, that's what we call the intersection, and it's denoted by that symbol right there, that upside down U. The intersection is what the two sets have in common. All right, and then it says write out all the outcomes for B and C. So for all the outcomes for B and C, that means you can roll a 1 and get a blue, roll a 1 and get a red, roll a 1 and get a white, roll a 2 and get a blue, roll a 2 and get a red, roll a 2 and get a white. You see where this is heading. Finished out that entire list of all the possible outcomes for event B, rolling a die, and event C, drawing a marble out of the bag, and you could see all the options. Um, when you list all of the options that could happen when you roll one die and draw one marble out of a bag, that's called the union of those two sets. All of the possible options that could happen when you do both of those events. The symbol for union is right here, this U, uppercase U in between the two sets. Next concept is this idea of null or empty set. Okay, so right here, they want us to find the intersection. That's all the things that set A and set B have in common. When you go to look at set A, 2, 4, and 6, set B, 1, 3, and 5, there is nothing in A that matches anything in B. Therefore, the set that is the intersection of the two does not exist or is what we call empty. It has nothing in it. So that's what we mean by the null set or the empty set. A lot of times you'll see that symbol right there representing empty set or null set. Next, we're going to introduce this idea of compliment. Now, this is not me saying that's a really nice shirt or you're very handsome. Not a compliment like that. It's 
um, what we mean by saying everything that's not in this set. So the complement of set A is every other element that's not in set A. So let me try to drive that point home with this example. Let's consider all the students at Millbrook High School as a sample space. Freshman students are in set A and senior students are in set B. If we make all the freshmen stay home today, who will be left in classes? So who would be the complement of set A? Well, that would be all 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade students. That would be what we mean as the complement of set A, everybody who's not a freshman. The complement of set B, if we asked all the seniors to stay home, that would be all 9th grade, 10th grade, and 11th grade students. So they would be the complement of set B, everybody who's not in B. If you can do example three, pausing your screen and then unpausing it to see if you get the right answer. Did you get the right answer? That's correct. If the set A is all of the even integers and set S is all integers, then the complement of set A is every integer that's not an even integer or known as the odd integers. Program discussion. Go ahead and pause your screen so you can write down all the information in this chart that I've written down. I'm going to make this Venn diagram that they've asked me to do with starbursts and M&Ms. Notice again with a Venn diagram you do have this overlapping section where they have common colors from starburst and M&Ms. I would start there and then list anything that's not left over. Okay, so what do they have in common? They both have red. They both have yellow. They both have orange. And no pink overlapping, no brown. So it looks like red, yellow, and orange. So they both have red, yellow, and orange. So red, yellow, and orange, that's where we overlap. Both Starburst and M&Ms have those colors. Now let's list the Starburst colors that we didn't already have here. That would be the pink. Okay. Then over here with the M&Ms that didn't get used, that was brown. That was green. That was blue. And it looks like the rest of those were used. So this would be my Venn diagram for my Starburst and my M&Ms. Notice that nothing is written twice even though it is shared. Um, let's check out this question here. Can a piece of candy be both a Starburst and an M&M at the same time? Uh, no, but they can be the same color. So that's what's important. So it's not that they can be the same candy, but they can be the same color. Um, mutually exclusive events are two or more events that cannot occur at the same time. So, for instance, you can't be both an M&M and a Starburst at the same time. Those are two totally different types of candy. Uh, maybe that doesn't make as much sense as, say, you can't be an odd and an even number at the same time. You can't be a positive and negative number at the same time. Then this next question here kind of sets us up with can a student at Millbrook High School be a freshman and also on a varsity sport? Well, yeah, that can happen at the same time. So that's this mutually inclusive. That's two or more events that can happen at the same time. So you can be a freshman and on a varsity sport at the same time. There's no rule that says freshmen can't play varsity sports. Um, so two events that can happen at the same time will be called mutually inclusive. Two events that can't happen at the same time, mutually exclusive. Um, notice we got the word rainbow here. So if we wanted to make a larger Venn diagram, we can actually include a third circle here. Now notice red, yellow, and orange are on the rainbow. So we'd actually have to take those out of there. And let me fix this a little bit. And put red, 
orange, and yellow in all three. Now, what are colors that show up on maybe the starburst and rainbow, but not in M&Ms? Well, pink isn't in the rainbow, uh, but red, yellow, orange, that is the overlap, and we already listed those. So we don't have any anything in this area that happens just between starburst and rainbow. How about over here with M&Ms and rainbow? Uh, is the color brown in rainbows? No. Is the color green? Yes. So we can actually take that out of there and put it in this overlapping area here. What about blue? Well, yeah, blue shows up in both. So I'm going to scoot this, finish my circle out, and make blue one of my colors that is in both M&Ms and the rainbow. Are there any other colors that show up in M&Ms and rainbows? It does not appear. It looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six colors for M&Ms already listed. So now I'm just going through and writing down the rest of the rainbow colors that have not been listed. Red, orange, yellow, blue, and green. Uh, red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. So it's just this indigo and violet. Indigo and violet. Those are our two colors that we have not listed to complete our three event Venn diagram. And just to drive the point home, uh, there is no color that um, kind of is exclusive here, but uh, notice that blue and green uh, are colors that could be M&M and rainbow, so those would be mutually inclusive events. Um, red, orange, yellow would be mutually inclusive for all three events. Uh, but pink and a rainbow would be mutually exclusive because it can't be both a starburst color and a rainbow color. So we slid down to example six. I want you to go ahead and fill out your Venn diagram and compare it to mine. Pause your screen and let's see if you get it right. Hey, let's see how you did. All right, I got 16 students in chorus that aren't in also banned and then you put the five that are dual enrolled and you add those two together and you get 21. So make sure that you are accounting for the ones that show up in the both column. I put that five in there first and I put the 15 that aren't enrolled in any of those out here and then I did my subtraction for both. You see how I wrote it out to make sure that the numbers all add up to 60. You do not want to have your four numbers add up to a number not the total. All right, so that's where we've got it correct. Let's see how you do on B through F. Okay, for B, the way that I think about B is the in, is the union or A and B. So I think about everybody that's in A and B. Actually, I'm sorry, let me try that again. It's actually A or B. You've got to be in at least one of those. So how many people are in at least chorus or band? How many people are in at least chorus or band? Well, that's going to be all these folks in here. So 16 that are in just chorus, 5 that are in both chorus and band, and 24 that are in, in just band. 45 kids are in either chorus or band. All right? Keep going and try out, see how you do. The word that I like to use for intersection would be and. So they have to be in both. Well, that's our five. That's our both. They're in chorus and band at the same time. What's this C right here mean? Remember, that's complement. That's everybody that's not in chorus. So everybody who's not enrolled in chorus. I went ahead and did everybody who's not in band as well. Notice I took the total and subtracted the number of people that were enrolled and got my number of people who were in the complement or not in chorus and not in band. Notice that the number of kids that are in both do count toward chorus and do count toward band. All right, our last ones here, let's see how you do. Let's do the complement of the union. So everybody who's not A or B. Okay, how'd you do? I got 15. 16 total students, 45 are in band or chorus. Notice that's the same number that's on the outside. All right, how about all the people who are not in both? 
I got 55, the 5 that are in both right here. From the total, 60 minus 5 is 55.